that we worship a man who was crucified. I mean, Jesus' crucifixion was not just a death sentence for someone who was innocent, but was also an intentionally belittling and humiliating death sentence. Why would anyone worship a person who died in such a way? Uh, most serious atheists just sort of chalk it up to human weakness. We Christians are scared of life. We need someone to put our confidence into, some kind of superhero. But people who think thusly do not really understand the full implications of the cross. The cross was not an expedient form of execution. It was really slow and expensive and labor intensive. Beheading, that was really expedient and quick. You were done with it. So crucifixion was not intended by the Romans or by anybody else who crucified to dispatch quickly the evildoer. The point of the cross was humiliation and warning. The point of the cross was if you crossed the Roman Empire, you didn't just die. You died painfully and slowly and hideously and you were publicly disgraced in front of everybody and left there to hang on that pole until your eyes got pecked out by birds. The cross is about humiliation and fear. Death's just a byproduct. To hang up on the cross is to be completely humbled under the Buddha Rome. Only Rome was just a tool. Rome might thought that she was the actor, but she was just the instrument that was being used by God. Jesus was humiliated on that cross in our place. Can you imagine the burden of guilt and shame that you would carry if you were not forgiven? What if you had to personally atone for every single act of wrongdoing you've ever committed in your whole life? Who among us could stand that? We'd all be what Jesus talked about last week, unsalty salt. Not even worth the dirt pile or the dung pile. Just useless. So God the Father had Rome and Satan do to his son what we deserved. Jesus suffered utter humiliation and damnation so that we would not have to do so. That's why although we do not worship the cross, we do adore it. We look to the crucifix to remind ourselves of the kind of death our Lord suffered for us. And we look to the empty cross to remind us of the reality that death could not hold our Lord who vanquished sin, death, and the devil. Yet hearing all of this, there are people who simply don't see how some guy dying on a cross a couple thousand years ago helps me today. I would have loved to have seen those fiery serpents in Moses' camp, wouldn't you have? Because you know, there had to be some guy there in the camp who said, come on, why would looking at a bronze serpent on a pole help us recover from snake bite? That's stupid, Moses. That's pure folly for people who cannot deal with the fact that this idiot Moses has now led us into a place with fiery serpents and we're all getting snake bit and dying painfully. 
So if you're too weak-minded to deal with this reality, you just march right on over and go stare at Moses' magic snake on a pole. You people with weak minds, go ahead. Believe that Moses can save you. Until they got bitten. I'm wondering how long it took them when they got bitten to run over there and look at that snake on the pole. Probably about two seconds. See, some of the great thinkers of the world have told us that the cross, the cross is folly. It's just silly. And you can't argue with such a person. I mean, come on, they've, they've made up their minds. They're not dummies. But you can offer to help them with their pain. Everyone has pain. People tend to try to mask it. Some people mask it with money. Some people mask it with food. Some people mask it with work. Some people use drugs and alcohol. But we all know that nobody survives this life without getting bitten. Yet we have the medicine. We have the bronze serpent on the pole. We can offer relief to anyone from the pain of this life. And our job, folks, on this earth is to be healers. If you're an atheist or agnostic or just a lazy know-it-all Christian, and I come to you with some kind of superior religious system, well, you're already loaded for bear. You've got all your excuses in order and all your reasons in order and all your explanations as to why my silly Sunday school faith won't help you. But if I come to you and I get to know you and eventually I discover that thing in your life that's causing you pain, that thing that's broken, and there's always something. And I offer you medicine to heal that pain. Well, what's there to argue about, right? St. Ignatius, who was the third bishop of Antioch, described the Holy Supper of our Lord, the sacrament, as the medicine of immortality. And Luther picked up on that in the large catechism. This is what Luther said. He said the sacrament is a pure, wholesome, soothing medicine that aids you and gives life in both soul and body. For where the soul is healed, the body is helped as well. That sounds like some pretty amazing medicine, does it not? The problem is, is that people want to sit around and argue about philosophy instead of taking the medicine. And we Christians, we too discount the value of the medicine. Look, you know, I understand every weekend when atheists and agnostics are not in church. I understand. If I were an atheist or an agnostic, I would be in bed, drinking coffee, watching TV, reading the paper, doing something. I mean, where else would they be? They're looking for an intellectual solution to their fiery life problems. But my question on a Sunday morning or a Saturday evening is where are the Christians? We have the medicine of immortality. And it shocks me that people would rather sleep in than take it. Or they'd rather go make money than take it. Or they find some kind of sporting event more important than taking it. And then, of course, they are the very ones who come to me and whine. Why would God let something happen like this? when something awful happens in this broken, despicable world. It's frustrating, but all I can do is do what Moses did. I can offer the medicine. I can put my serpent on the pole, and I can look at it, and I can invite everybody else to look at it, because the cross is the source of the medicine. It's where his body and his blood were poured out for us 
so that we could eat and drink and not be damned and be strengthened for living in this broken world. Look to the cross. That's where Jesus made everything different for us. The cross is where we look for all of the other stuff of Christianity, good works and holy living and right worship. It all flows from that foolish, foolish cross from which flows the medicine of immortality.